Hey everyone, it's Syme here, and today I want to share some quick tips on getting better dynamic range. Getting better dynamic range in our files in Lightroom, really in any raw processor, especially on our single files, how we can really maximize the dynamic range. I teach a lot about dynamic range, and of course I talk a lot about exposure in my classes. And what I want to dig into quickly is just some very quick tips now, what I'm going to start with, I've got two files I'm going to work with today from two different cameras. This first one is from a 5D Mark II. We can see that it's kind of a quirky portrait done with a strobe. And the first thing is that we start in camera. Okay, good dynamic range always starts in camera. A lot of times people do multiple files and they'll do these exposures, really light and really dark. And there's a time for that. Sometimes you need to tone map. But the truth is I rarely have to tone map anymore because if I expose well, if I see my light, if I see my exposures, if I see my zones, if I place things where they belong and make sure I don't clip my highlights too much, I can get the dynamic range. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a couple of presets. Here's the reality. I catch a lot of flack, like, oh, real photographers do everything manually. No, they don't. Professionals use presets because it saves us a ton of time, and it gets us more options and less time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here then, and we're going to look at why the dynamic range is working. I'm going to pick it apart. So I'm going to apply a couple presets from my natural HDR set. And so let's just go down here, and I'm going to pull in dynamic night two, okay? And so we see that we just change the image radically. Here's before, and here's after. Now, Let's get away from the preset and look at what's happening and how we can take advantage of it. What's going on here? Well, first of all, I have an image where, you know, I used the strobe. I balanced it for the light in the sky, put that light on her face so I wasn't bringing up too much in the shadows. Now, we're almost clipping on her face, but you actually see in the histogram here, we're really utilizing that tonal range. This is a common mistake in high dynamic range files, especially in tone map files, is people think, oh, we need to crush everything into the midtones. You don't want that. Now, rules are made to be broken, right? But most of the time, you want some rich shadow. You want some highlight. The shadow and the highlight, the contrast, it gives the image the depth, and that's what we want. So in this case, I bumped up the exposure a bit, but then I came down and I dialed back my highlights a lot. Then I bumped up my shadows a lot. So you can see that that's having a profound effect right here on the dynamic range. But it's more than that, because even though modules in Lightroom and in our raw processors will cross over, that doesn't mean we shouldn't use both. So I've done the shadow and highlight here. Then I've gone down to the tone curve, and I've dropped the highlights back a little bit more in the tone curve while punching up the lights. And I'll do this a lot to retain contrast in the image. Dial back the highlights, punch up the lights, dial back the darks, and punch up the shadows just a little bit. And with that, you can maintain dynamic range while still keeping some contrast in there. And then I balance it out with a little bit of contrast on the top. Okay, so it starts in the camera. It ends with good post-processing. Try and keep that full tonal range in your histogram. Try to bring in the areas you need to, but keep some contrast. Now, here's one down on the Sony A7R Mark II, which is a very powerful sensor in terms of dynamic range. I'm not sure I could have done this on my 5D. Now, we see here, again, that while I'm leaning towards the light side, there's really not much clipping. And these are base RAW files that I'm starting with. This one out of the Sony is very flat, so obviously it's going to need some work. You're not going to get a straight out of camera one like this. We have to process it just like we would have back in the darkroom days when we took it in our negative into the darkroom. You can see I've already dialed back the exposure just a little bit. But let's go again to a preset and let's go to the flat to dynamic intense because we definitely have an issue where the foreground especially is really flat. So I'm going to start with that one and we'll apply the preset. And then I'm going to do the Sunset Skies grad, which is also here in Natural HDR. Okay, so with just two clicks, I've really brought out the punch and the dynamic range and the contrast all at once. I'm going to go down here and dial back these blues just a little bit because I think they're a little much. So I'm going to manually do that. And I encourage people they use presets. Presets are just a tool to get, get you where you need to go faster, but they'll also help teach you about your images and help you do more with them. Okay, what's happening in the development of this? First of all, once again, I exposed. It goes back to the good exposure in camera, the foundation of zones. When I was standing there, I knew I was pushing it because I was looking right into the sun, which was a little bit behind the clouds, but really hardcore light coming down, and then trying to balance that out with this beautiful foreground that I had and keep the range. Normally, I'm going to expose my subject for the zone that I want it in. So like Caucasian skin, for example, I might put it zone six, which is one stop above middle gray. Now, 
in the case of a really high dynamic range scene, I learned how far I can push my camera, how many blinkies on the camera, which is just a JPEG preview, how many blinkies am I going to get away with on that and be able to recover in the post-production? How far can I push it? And so if I put the subject, let's say here in the foreground, right where I want it, and I'm totally blowing out the sky, then I'm going to hearken back to how the principles of zones work, how we used to do in the darkroom. I'm going to compensate a little bit so I don't lose the highlights and I, so I get the balance I want. And that's exactly what happened here. If we go back to the base, and so, you know, here's our original, original raw file, a little bit of exposure, and then the presets, right? And so I've done the same thing in the develop module. I've brought back the shadows, given us some more shadows, brought back some highlights, but then I've used the tactic I showed you a minute ago to get some punch and maintain the contrast. And of course, you can continue this by controlling tonal values in the luminance channels of the color channels. And so you can actually manage your tone control specifically in those areas with the blues, or in this case, the yellows, the oranges. And then what I did is I, I used the other preset, which applied a gradient to the sky here, and we can see what's happening in there. I brought back the exposure even more, a little more on the highlights, but then I used some clarity and some dehaze to bring that punch up a little bit more, okay? So the finesse is important. Starting in camera is important. The truth is I rarely do bracketed tone mapped images. It doesn't mean they're wrong. It doesn't mean there's not a place for it. I just know that if I have my raw file and if I expose right, if I look at the scene, meter the scene, know what I'm dealing with, I can usually get the image in one file. And that way I'm working with that single raw file straight in Lightroom or whatever raw processor I'm using, and pull out all that information right from the raw file before I go to any editor. Now, on this one, before I print it, I might go into Photoshop and just do a little bit of pixel painting. And let me turn on the, the indicators. It's not clipped here, but just to balance it out, I might paint a little bit of soft yellow or orange over that just to balance out that sky a little bit. But the bottom line is we've pulled out a lot of dynamic range straight from the raw file efficiently and the key is to start it right in camera and finish it right with great post-production. Okay, that's all for now, but you can, of course, find more videos and freebies and all kinds of good stuff on my website, simeffects.com, as well as the Natural HDR presets that I talked about today. Also, if you head over to the Natural HDR page, you can check out the before and after sliders on these images that we just did and uh, play around with them a little bit. It's pretty cool. So, hey, hope that was helpful. Have fun.